How many songs do you think you've wrote like in your life, like as a singer songwriter? At least 500, 500. probably. Yeah. Holy shit. Dude. Maybe more that I started and never finished. Yeah. But I'd say like 500 completed. That's crazy. So, okay. That's, that kind of explains the, the, the talent that I have in front of me right now. Hey guys, this uh, is Alex and we're talking today to Jason Charles Miller, freaking legend who sang on Metal Gear Rising, Rules of Nature, uh, the Shadowbringers main theme, uh, To The Edge, and also Blaze Blue. Yeah. Did you do other games like that I don't know about? Well, um, there, there's one coming out really soon. And I'll, I Ooh. have three songs in, an, in a game that's being released uh, before the end of the year. Damn. And I can't wait to talk to you about that one. Oh, damn. <laughs> but I can't. I'm not allowed to talk about it. Okay, until yeah, it usually comes NDAs out. and stuff like that. Okay, so so what we're sure. going to do now is uh, I asked my my fans or my my community what questions they have for you, and I picked the best ones. And also, I have a few questions that I want to ask yourself about you and your personal projects because obviously, the video game music stuff you do is just one small layer of like the incredible music persona that you are. So, I want to dive deeper in that too. But let's start with like some. Uh, you know, video game questions. And first, my question is like, from what I know, you're a great all-rounded musician. And on top of that, your voice is legendary. And it's what distinguishes you among the greats. You know, it's when like, that's the thing Thank that you. is like, only you sing that way. I don't know how you do it. But when I hear it, it's so particular. And I often wonder where it comes from. How did you start making music? Why did you start? And how, you know, like when? So actually, I started singing in front of crowds when I was five years old. Okay. Um, and um, like, I remember my first official performance, I think was in kindergarten at the talent show at my, at my elementary school when wow. I was six years old. But my parents told me that I just started like singing for people when I was five in public places. And I think what had happened was my dad told me this story about how we were on a train mm -hmm. and we went into the lounge of, uh, of, uh, in the back of the train. And there was a musician, um, that was playing on a piano and he was just sort of playing popular songs at the time. And he asked if anyone else wanted to sing something. And, uh, Apparently I said, I'll, I want to sing. <laughs> and I got up and, and I got up and I sang country roads by John Denver. Oh, damn. Uh, and apparently, uh, apparently the crowd went wild. Cause I was this six year old yeah. little kid. That's so cool. And, uh, I guess that stuck in my head of like, Oh, people react to this. So that's been ingrained uh, in my DNA ever since to always want to perform. So, I get it. So do you, do you fancy yourself as an extrovert? Completely. Oh, wait, wait. I am 1000% an extrovert. I've been described as gregarious in the best way, I suppose, like <laughs> as a compliment. Yeah. Uh, I just, I have no fear. I will start walking up to people and just start talking to them. Um, you know, I'm, I, I don't know. I just break, I, I'm all, you know, I, I do it in, in the friendliest way possible, but I always, I'm trying to make new friends. That's great. So maybe you're the type of musician that likes to enlighten the world a little bit. Like you're like, I'm here. I'm going to make the world a little better place with my talents. That, that's the, the vibe I get from you. I would hope so. I mean, uh, that's like what, what makes me most uh, satisfied or gratifying to me when I can create something or sing something um, or perform something that affects people in a positive way. Even if, you know, a lot of the things that I write, a lot of the songs that I write for myself as an artist or for other artists or, you know, for uh, my old band Godhead, they were sort of looking at life from a negative point of view, mm -hmm. but by people finding camaraderie in that yeah, and realizing man. that they feel that way too, yeah. that, that then helps lift people up. That's how music saves the world. I, I, I also compose music, orchestral music for the most part. And it's oh, I know. Like, yeah, no, <laughs> thank you for, 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 for yeah, that. Yeah, man, you're awesome. Thanks. You are awesome. <laughs> and those tracks sometimes, they're not always happy, right? And people love set music for this reason because it makes you feel understood. And actually, it makes you, making you feel like that sense of like, oh, you're not alone is uplifting. It's, it's a positive force, I think. Right. You, so you feel understood. That's exactly right. And, and, you know, the way I look at it is there's so many 
happy songs in the world, right? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> you know, that I, I just that just, I, I just I look at things from a different point of view. It's the positive flip side of the saying misery loves company <laughs> um, or, because uh, when you find that you're not alone, that will, that empowers you. Yep. There you go. Dude, that's how I how feel when I listen to freaking rules of nature, you know, that's awesome. That's, and, uh, and I, I'm sure lots of people feel that same way. Like that song is just makes you believe that you can do amazing shit, no matter who you are. It's very empowering. Well, and Jamie, who wrote that song, uh, Matt, that whole soundtrack is so awesome. Yeah. Like, I'm so happy to be a part of that. Um, yeah, it's and, amazing. And Jamie's great. What's crazy is the way that I got on that soundtrack was a very good friend of mine is a world famous cellist by the name of Tina Guo. Oh, I know. Her. Probably, she's freaking amazing. Wow. That's yeah. yeah she's so, great. uh, She's actually played, she played on something of mine. Um, I mean, she's played on everything. Yeah. But uh, she, if, if my EP, Last to Go Home, uh, there's a song I do. No. Yeah, she played on Last to Go Home, and she also played on the Uncountry album. There's a song called Learn to Live With It, and it's basically just an acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. my voice, and her cello. You got to check it out. But anyway. That's cool, She man. recommended me for that. She recommended me. And uh, Jamie heard my voice and, yeah. you know, I know it went up to flagpole at Platinum Games. You know, when you get asked to do things like this of such a high um, How did caliber, you feel? Well, at the time, I felt very nervous. Yeah, obviously. You know, I was, you, know you don't want to screw up. You're yeah. like, oh, God, I don't want to get sick but right before the session. Like, you know, you want to be on your A game because... Let's face it. I mean, Rules of Nature, that is a high song. Holy shit. Right? Yeah. And I am a tenor, but those notes are like some Steve Perry journey yeah. notes. You know? <laughs> I don't so even know I how just, you did it. Honestly, I tried. I made an analysis of it on YouTube and I tried to sing it and like process it, like to, to kind of break it down and understand what you did. And I'm like, no way. Like I had to like take my voice and increase it by a few semitones on the computer because it was impossible physically to reach those notes. It's crazy. Now, we, we did perform it live um, at the game launch. So there oh, was damn. a game launch yeah. event. Um, and I want to say, if you, um, do you know the, um, the video game news site, IGN? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you check back in IGN stories and go back to 2013, hopefully it's still archived, there is... Um, footage from the launch event and actually Nita Strauss is on guitar, mm. which is really awesome. Um, and they put together sort of an all-star band for <laughs> the, for the launch event. And so I actually sang rules of nature live and I don't know how I pulled it off. I think it was pure adrenaline. Yeah, probably. I made it, I made it through. <laughs> Man. Wow. Congratulations. That's uh, I mean, when you're singing lyrics like those with a band like that, of course you're going to, it was awesome. Best. So I, I want to ask you some rapid fire questions because we got a lot, actually, questions sure. from the community, which are very curious about you. Rikia asks, I know you voiced Rauban in Final Fantasy XIV, Aram Reborn, and which a surprise for many, and sang on the main theme for Shadowbringers, as well as in 2DH. I'm curious about how you got that gig. How did Square Enix and Soken find you and decided to work with you? Well, I'm not 100%. I, okay, so there's a company here in the U.S. called the HALP Network, H-A-L-P, and they, um, they sort of, they cast different games mm -hmm. and things like that. And I know that they have a relationship with Square Enix. And they're the ones that reached out to me. I believe what had happened was is they submitted some samples of my singing mm -hmm. to Soken, and I was picked that way. Wow. So I'm really grateful to them for recommending me um, because I believe, you know, look, the company's so big, right? Square mm -hmm. Enix is a huge company. When I was the voice of Raubon for Realm Reborn, um, that was when the voice acting was all being done in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then later, um, just they, they moved the production to the U.K., mm -hmm. and then they recast everybody. And that kind of stuff happens in video games yeah. occasionally. So... Um, I would have been I would have been more upset 
if like they only recast me, but yeah, apparently they recast, yeah, yeah. they recast everyone. So like, I didn't feel bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know? Uh, how, how did you, then, how did that job? That was still through the help network, like the, the Robon, like, uh, the, the, that one was through, it could have been, I can't remember. I just know I auditioned for it and mm -hmm. I got it uh, either through my, I think it was just through my agent um, mm -hmm. at the time. So that one, I auditioned for it as an actor because, um, If you look at my IMDb, you'll see I have like 124 acting credits. Holy shit. Uh, that's one of, one of my other things is, you know, I'm a voice actor in uh, cartoons, anime, commercials, and video games. Wow, so, man, that's so uh, cool. You know, that, that uh, I guess from being a singer, I take it very seriously. I, you know, it's definitely uh, an aspect of my career. Dude, your that voice I work is at. a gift to the world. So it's good that you're using it in like many ways. Thank so. you. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly a gift to me and it certainly has helped yeah. me, uh, you know, navigate my way through life. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, I am, I take voice acting very seriously and uh, have been doing that for about 17 years. Okay. Other question. This time is from Roland Demon. He asks, do you play the games you make music for in order to get the context of what the song should represent? Or do you sing without having played the game first? Right. So that's a very interesting question. Uh, there are some games that I do play, uh, but the time commitment is so crazy. I have the same problem. Um, man. Yeah. <laughs> And so um, I embarrassingly have never played Final Fantasy XIV. I've played other games in the Final Fantasy series, and I uh, certainly love how great Man, an amazing this, Final Fantasy XIV is. Honestly, this like makes your singing even more impressive, in my opinion. Because oh, like you didn't play it, but yet you freaking defined the mood. Or you nailed and defined the mood at the same time of this game perfectly. Like it goes without saying, like your Shadowbringers main theme vocals and to the edge is just they're just top notch. And uh oh, thank you. You were able to get that just by intuition, or did they tell you, oh, Yes. Well, I had, I, so before I sang Shadowbringers, um, I had a very official meeting with Soken over Skype mm -hmm. and, uh, we went over everything on the song, the lyrics, what was happening in the game, like the significance of this theme mm -hmm. and, and therefore, um, I felt like I was given amazing direction okay. by Soken and Soken's team yeah. on how to approach it. Right. And um, what's crazy is I turned in four different versions. I, I took the song very seriously and I said, look, this is a great opportunity uh, and I don't want to screw this up. And I remember I was getting ready to go on tour mm -hmm. And um, they needed it by a certain time. Um, and I knew I was going to be gone for, I think, a month. So I, I, just, I, I just worked on it for a long time. And in fact, I own a recording studio in North Hollywood. And so I hate my engineers to just be there extra with me like all night. And wow. I remember one like faded out and then I had to bring in another one. <laughs> <laughs> one was like, I'm done. Oh, <laughs> so I'm like, wow, all right, man. call Ben, get Ben over here. Let's That's do this. That's crazy, man. I wow. just so like make... the first time you go back to them with the song, it was like four songs, a four version. Yeah, I, you know, because they gave me a certain direction and I tried that mm -hmm. and then I wanted to do it my own way as well. And I just wanted to make sure that I gave them enough to work that with. That is amazing, man. They knew, and, and because I knew the, you know, how much the game means to people, yeah. how much the game meant to them, and how, you know, I just really wanted to get it right. That's amazing. That's, uh, that makes me, I mean, as a musician, I don't feel like inadequate. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, Damn, I should work harder. <laughs> you know, like I mean, I don't recommend doing that all the time. No, 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 I know. You know? But dude, I heard about. Do you know Cell Dweller by chance? Like the artist Cell Dweller? Have you ever heard? Of course, yeah. Th that guy, he, for his biggest song, Switchback, before releasing him, he, releasing the song, he made I don't know how many mixes, and he spent like two thousand hours on the song. If I'm not wrong, so I can believe it. Yeah, stories like that it. make me feel like, oh, I'm not working hard enough. So that's very inspiring. Someone asked. What was it like to work with Soken and Square Enix for both to the Edge and Shadowbringers compared to past experiences with other games and game companies? Like, it was like the, the language barrier, was it a problem? Like, uh, because like, oh. 
you know, how is it like to work with Japanese people compared to working with Western people? Like there's completely different, different cultural, like, um, you know, differences and stuff. How did, right. how did you find the experience to be? No, it was, a, it was, it was a joy. Um, he had people on the call th that spoke uh, perfect English. So uh, I didn't feel like we had any language issues. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like he gave me exactly the direction that I needed. And um, if I had any questions, I could email back. Yeah. I think maybe I had one or two. Um, I have a, when we get to talking about um, the latest song, mm -hmm. oh, if I think there's a question about that, right? Coming yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a part in the song where your vocals like scream so high. Yes. And that they kind of represent a very big sense of grief and mourn. And they, they asked if, it was so can they ask you to sing like that or if it was your intuition? Well, here's what's interesting. So they send you uh, something with a guide vocal, okay. right? Uh, and they even wrote in the notes, here's the guide vocal for the song. At this moment, there's this really high note. You don't have to sing it. Oh, um, Try it if you want, but there's no pressure for you to sing that note. We know how high it is. And I bet right? that's where you put most of your effort. And I was like, mm, I'm gonna get this. <laughs> so I worked on that note like crazy to make sure I got it just right. And I remember when I sent it back, I got an email from his team and they were like, wow, you hit the high note. You went for it. So Man. that was really satisfying. And it sounds great in the track. I yeah, was dude. really happy. Yeah, that, like, it came out. Like, it's when you hit notes that high for all but the very few notes that high are unpredictable yeah at best that that and made so, the song that I, i'm for so me, glad i'm so so glad yeah man dude that one i swear to god like it's so cool i was like how the fuck did he do that because i understand how complicated it is as a musician and the song mm -hmm. itself is cool like even the bass line is amazing i made the funk remix of that but the the, the high vocal I saw that yeah glad you yeah. enjoy it but man the high vocal is where everyone was like oh my god shit is real this is the final fight it was awesome about, about your vocals, there's something that someone asked about the lyrics specifically. Do you get creative freedom into like writing the lyrics or changing them or do you have to sing them as they come? For video games like this, especially for Final Fantasy or for Rules of Nature, um, it, it was there, the lyrics were already presented to me and I take that very seriously mm -hmm. because as a songwriter, I know that every word has has uh um you know every word has a meaning yeah. every word is placed there with care right yeah. and so yeah. the last thing i want to do is change someone else's finely crafted lyrics so i may ask a question or two on how they want it phrased or i may take a little bit of liberty with maybe the way i end the phrase mm -hmm. But uh, I also will always give it to them exactly the way it was presented to me as well. And if maybe they like the inflection or just a little bit of embellishment that I've done at the end of certain words, that's their choice to put that into the final version. That's cool. But I always give it exactly as presented. Man, it takes so much, I think, selflessness to do it this way. Because I know this, like when, when I make covers and now when I make video game covers and stuff like that. I don't really send them to Square Enix for them to publish it. So I can take my freedoms, but it's, uh, in that case, I have to think of the listeners. The listeners like to hear something that's similar to the original, but I am always kind of like, yeah, but I like in my own way. And it's hard to, you know, respect the original if you feel like you have something to say. And man, your voice, again, is like unlike any other. Your talent is noticeable. Someone like this, might naturally be like, oh, you know, I'm great. I should change it my way. While well, you're very, th you're thinking about, they want it like this. There's a reason why they want it like this. I'm going to provide that. And then it seems like you keep your own like originality for your own music, which is like plenty. I want to talk about that later too. But man, congrats for that because it's not easy to be so selfless. In my opinion, especially Thanks. if you have a past as a, as a rock star and stuff like that, you know, and you're still a rock star right now. Like it's a, <laughs> it's a very difficult, like, combination to be so talented and also so humble. So I commend you for that. That's, that's great. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Someone asked, when you record your vocals and you hear them back, do you like listen to that, enjoying them? Like you rock on to the, your, the, your voice or are you paying attention to the things you could have done better? And you're like, ah, this is terrible. Oh, I'm always, 
paying attention, I hear the slightest imperfections of something going just a tiny bit out of tune and it drives me crazy. (laughs) So I make sure that whatever I release or whatever I send off to someone else to release, Mm -hmm. that it's as perfect as I can get (laughs) it because I, I just want it. I can just hear it when it's off by like, you know, an, an eighth of a, and I'm just like, ah, oh. so, yeah. so it bugs me so much that I just make sure that I get it right before I send it out or, or, or release oh, that's it. Great. Now, once it's out, I don't harp on it so much, like, because then you just can't enjoy your own work. Right. So sometimes you just have to sit back and actually enjoy what you have produced. I agree with that. But when I'm in the process of recording it, I will sing it as many times as I need to, to get it exactly right. And I'll comp every word. Mm-hmm. And I will, you know, I'm like, okay, that, that I sang that better than that. All right, let me move that up. You know, that's, and it, it just looks like a rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you, you know, I'm sure if you use Pro Tools or Logic, yeah. you know, every tech is a different color. Every playlist is a different color. Yeah, dude, so then I'll throw this, boo, 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 and it just looks like a rainbow. Yeah. And but so once it looks like a something. rainbow, I know I'm, I know I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what matters, like the final result. And man, like, again, the work ethic, like, I think people don't understand how much effort goes into music creation, because it's like cooking a dish, like, every, do everything perfectly, but they ignore the fact that you've been learning this for many years and stuff like that. And it's so hard to do everything balanced. They just enjoy the final product and they're like, oh, this is great. But that they don't know, like, all the effort. And man, wow. Like, it's great to hear that, you know, you do these things. Really, really inspiring. Yeah. On top of the music being great. Uh, okay, just a few more Final Fantasy questions. Uh, then I want to ask a sure. few general video game questions. Then we're going to go in your, your own you know, career and uh, okay. your, your music. Uh, someone asked, how do you feel about having become the male counterpart of Susan Calloway as far as Final Fantasy XIV is concerned? Because she sang on the main theme of like, I remember Reborn and uh, Stormblood and probably Heaven's Word, I don't remember. But now you did the Shadowbringers. How do you feel about that? Oh, I think it's great. I mean, her voice is amazing. So that's a great honor to be the male counterpart. I think we we talked about this before too. Like when you get such big jobs, you feel a bit of that. For me personally, you know, one time I was making a, this didn't go anywhere, but I was with some friends that work in a trailer music business. They have a trailer music label. We were working on a proposal for a custom trailer of Final Fantasy VII Remake and I was making the music. When you get such big jobs, you're like, ah, you just feel that imposter syndrome getting the hold of you. And you're like, oh my God, I'm not going to make it. Or I'm not so good, blah, blah. It's like crazy. But then you do it and you're like, those big challenges cannot lead you to break your limits and realize how good you are actually. Maybe that's what happened to you also. Um, Yeah, I think that, I mean, I get imposter syndrome all the time, right? And I think we all do um, because we're we're always our own worst critic. Mm -hmm. And therefore... um, you know, sometimes you can have almost mentally crippling uh, imposter syndrome. Yeah. But I think that, uh, you know, we were talking about voice acting earlier too. Mm -hmm. Uh, One time I was cast in, um, I was cast in an episode of Batman, the Brave and the Bold. And um, to my left of me was Kevin Michael Richardson and to my right of me was Tom Kenny, and Tom Kenny's the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh my god! In a million things, yeah. um, Dietrich Bader who, uh, was Batman in this series, and he's one of my favorite. Um, uh, so one of your idols, really? Yeah, I, he's 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 one of my favorite like comedic actors, and he was in Office Space, which is an iconic movie here in the U.S. And mm-hmm. I I was like, I'm in the room with all these amazing people. Yeah, like what they're going to know that I suck. And then I, but then something told me like, if you're in the room, Mm -hmm. like if, if you were invited into this room, then you deserve to be there. Yeah. So that's sort of how I get over imposter syndrome with almost any uh, situation, be it music or acting or, or anything is that if you were invited to be in this room, Mm -hmm. if you were invited to be in this group, if you were invited to do this job, you deserve to be there. Yeah, I agree so, with that. So suck it up and do it. Man, I, I think like the, the beard, it's very fitting because you're freaking wise, man. 
Like you're, you're like Gandalf <laughs> spitting through. Yeah, I'm right becoming here. the wizard. I, I'm becoming the wizard <laughs> of the entertainment business. I guess. Yeah. I'm slowly, slowly turning into Gandalf, which I'm totally fine yeah, it's, with. It's great music, Gandalf. We like it. Someone asked, would you consider making unplugged covers of your Final Fantasy songs? Because I'd love to hear your incredible voice and skills without filters or processing. Like they say, you're the. I agree with that. Like your voice is freaking amazing, and. It sounds amazing in the, in the you know in the context of those songs, but sometimes it's, it's processed. So when right. I heard it, actually in your own solo music, like D behind me, I don't remember the name the exact oh, name. Oh, get D behind me. Get D behind yeah. me. I didn't remember because it's like English, like complex English. Yeah. But <laughs> there, like you hear the vocals way more because they're like the, the main element, and it's like holy shit, this man, so good. So I, would you consider making like unplugged covers of Final Fantasy songs that you made? I definitely would. Um... The only, I think the only issue is I, I want to make sure that I'm not disrespecting the oh, original. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if I were, if I were to do a cover, I would ask their, I would ask the blessing mm-hmm. of like Sokin or Square Enix just to make sure that they don't think that I'm capitalizing on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't want I don't want them to think that I'm taking advantage for a couple reasons. One, number one, for respect, and number two, um, I obviously don't want to jeopardize them hiring me in the future too. Yeah, obviously. But I will say this: um, I don't want to reveal too much, okay. but I'm working I'm working on a cover with a an, a music YouTuber uh, on a even more aggressive version of Rules of Nature. Oh man, that's what I always and, dreamed. Like there's and a, I asked Jamie, but I asked for Jamie's blessing yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. I just, dude, cool. I was gonna say there's a freaking there's a guy. I don't know if it's him. If it's him, it's like what? There's a guy called Little V Mills, and he made the cover of Rules of Nature, and it's amazing. I heard that. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. really good. And I was like, um, what if like the man himself sang on that? Jason sang. On so the, we're working on something like that just to sort of have it out there. That's amazing. Um, and once again, like the, enough time has sort of gone by, and that song has been become so iconic that um how do you feel I about think, that actually dude like because of rules of nature well, like dude i didn't know that, that's yeah, the thing like you, you I, cannot predict that <laughs> you know but, but how do you yeah, feel after i didn't know what was gonna happen and i also didn't really realize how it became a meme where people <laughs> were taking like you know i the whole thing about like rules of nature applies to everything yeah you know, videos of like people freaking out and then they play rules of nature yeah, i, I didn't it. know that happening yeah so i love that that's that's great like because of its popularity like literally all the world has heard your music screaming in their face that's great yeah that's great life goals i would run other video game questions there are not too many they're like four or maybe even less and then okay. questions about you and you and your uh, your career someone asked how did you get in the video game music industry but you talked about help before so maybe that's kind of reply to that well yeah i mean the the way i got into it, it you know initially was through voice acting first. Mm -hmm. And then, um, because I don't like to push myself on people too much. I'd rather people discover what I do. But once people sort of discover the other things that I've done and the people that I've worked with in in the music industry, Mm -hmm. then um, that's when these other offers start happening. So it's sort of an organic process. Mm -hmm. Also, when I get cast in something, you know, no one who is, in, unless it's a very small video game company, the voice acting um, team rarely talks to the music team. Yeah, I could imagine they just that. Talk to each other because you know everyone's working on their own department to get this game out. Yes. Um, yeah. So it would be it would be a little rude, even I think, to try to push my music or my musical skills onto the voice acting team. So how did that, that uh, happen? So they just discovered. By themselves, essentially. Yeah, and I think that that's that's kind of the coolest way um, for it to organically happen because then you're not um, you're not being pushy. Yeah, I know? agree with that. Actually, I, I kind of struggle with that because, like, you know, you're Gandalf, you're you're cool, but me as a, <laughs> a young Frodo, I kind of have like the sometimes I'm like, hey, I want to do awesome shit, I want to do stuff, and I put stuff out there maybe sometimes, and maybe no one sees it. So on the internet, if no one sees your stuff. You need to like maybe push it a bit more. And sometimes it's good to do it, but in other environments, it's not so great. So it's, uh, I think it's, it's a fine yeah. balance. Yeah. I mean, you've got to market yourself, right? Exactly. And, um, uh, 
that, but that's different than I, I think marketing to the public is something that I, I totally agree with, mm -hmm. but, but trying to, uh, push yourself onto other people that you're working with directly. Oh yeah, no, that's not good. Hey, try me on this or do me that. Do you know I do this? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, you know, no, no. let them discover that on their own, yeah. you know, but what's been great is like the cartoon that I just sang on that mm -hmm. I sent you the clip of. Yeah, it was cool, man. Um, that came about. So I just sang on, um, was it DC, uh, What's the name of that? These superhero girls. Yeah. I sang two songs because the the um the story arc is that Raz Agul uh wants to take over the world with his evil music. <laughs> and so they hired me to be his singing voice. That's cool. But the way that that happened was because Sam Regal, uh, who I knew originally through um voice acting, mm -hmm. who then I uh wrote and co-wrote the theme songs to his role-playing show. A critical role. Mm -hmm. uh, he knew what kind of singing voice I had. So I auditioned for the part, but he really recommended me and was the one that pushed it over yeah. the finish line for me to get that part. Once again, I knew him originally from being a voice actor uh, and let him discover what else that I yeah. do. And he's a great singer in his own right. So um, he very easily could have given himself that part. I think it's also that people like to work with their friends, right? Like if you know somebody and stuff, it's just better. It is. And it's, it, you know, if people like to work with people that they are comfortable with and already know and know that they can do a good job and that they'll show up and, and, and do what is required of them to do. So it's a long road, essentially. I guess it is. It's, it, it is a very long road, but, um, you know, you just have to keep at it and believe in yourself yeah. and uh, know that eventually things will, the eyes of the universe will turn on you eventually. I think this you has become to, like an advice, like interview for like advice for upcoming singers and musicians. I don't mind that at all. Me I don't neither, man. I love, I, I love to talk about this stuff. Is there a, was there a dream project that you had when you were younger that you ended up achieving? And is there one that you're, you know, what, what is one that you're working up now instead? Well, I think just in general, like I grew up a huge anime fan, right? Mm. And so to be then cast in anime and working regularly yeah. as an actor in anime, that was like a huge goal for what me. What are your top three animes? Top three animes, and this is going to show my Gandalf old age <laughs> here. Is it Trigon? But, uh, right, my top three. Oh. No, man, older than Trigon. Oh, My shit. top three are Macross. Wow, okay. In the US, it was called Robotech. Uh, Yamato, okay. which uh, in the US was called Star Blazers. And uh, Galaxy Express 999, or Ginga Tetsudo 39. I think that's the only one that I know. Like, but I that, That's the one with the train flying through yeah, space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. And maybe that, maybe my affinity for trains when I was a little kid is what made me like that <laughs> that show so much. But I love the I love the morality of that show and like the lessons that it teaches. But to be honest, like with and especially with more specifically for video games, you know, I mean, I remember one summer where all I did was play Final Fantasy three. The fact that you know, years later, mm -hmm. I'm working, I'm singing in Final Fantasy 14. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't, I don't know if you know this, but I acted in the Final Fantasy 7 remake. What? Really? Yeah. I'm an, I'm, I'm an actor in that game. Whoa. Uh, I play a bunch of smaller roles, yeah, yeah, but my yeah. main role is I'm the junk dealer. So you kind of encounter me early on and I give you quests. No way. Yeah. Hey, there's friends over in the warehouse. <laughs> Go take care of it. <laughs> I get okay. I, that's so cool, man. Wow. That's yeah. such a surprise. So, and, and, you know, just things that I was attached to or worked on as a kid um, to be able to continue to work on it as an adult is a real, um, is a real thrill yeah. for me. So, I'm okay, so what, what's your dream project? Like one of your dream projects now that you'd like to do in the future? Um, it's just continue to collaborate with great people. Um, I'm kind of keeping myself open in the universe like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, for my, my last album in the wasteland, I was able to collaborate with, um, Ricky Metlock from the band Leonard Skinner, which is wow, kind of amazing. Man. I grew up listening wow. to them. 
And then uh, Charlie Starr from the band Blackberry Smoke, which is newer in the, in the big scheme of things, mm-hmm. but he's, he has one of my favorite voices. So we actually sing a duet on my album. That's it's cool. called Old Scarecrow. And then Ricky plays slide guitar on it. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's what who I never thought I would have worked with growing up um, just because I didn't think it was possible was Billy Ray Cyrus. And, you know, I've written songs with him. Really? I co-produced one of his albums. Wow. Um, so, you know, uh, Marilyn Manson, another one, my yeah. godhead, my old godhead, we were signed to his record label. Uh, I wrote songs with him. He was the executive producer of our biggest album. We toured all over the world opening for him. That's so, so um, another full circle thing of just being in the industry mm-hmm. That when I was when I was 16 years old, mm-hmm. I skipped school to uh, wait in line to buy Ozzy Osbourne tickets, right? Yeah, and uh, I got in big trouble with my parents because they found out about it. Yeah, and they punished me and, and everything. And then years later, um, I my band played on the Oz Fest, and then uh, my I became friends with the Osbourne family. Man. <laughs> Got, when my mom came to visit me, I was able to bring my mom over to Ozzy's house no and everyone way. and got to meet and my mom met Ozzy and he gave her a tour of their house. Yeah, if you watch... Um, Dude, if, that's if like, you, you're living the dream right now. Right, isn't that crazy? Yeah. So, uh, you oh, know, uh, I often save this story for conventions, but there was another instance where um, I was at the Osborne house. And at one point, Ozzy asked me if I had heard his new album and it hadn't come out yet. So he's like, did you hear my new album? And I said, no, because it's not out yet. And he's like, well, let me play it for you. Ooh. So the next thing I know, it's me and Ozzy sitting on his couch what? and he's playing me his new album. And not, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, he's going to play me a song or two and we're going to skip around. No, he played me the whole album from start to finish and he sang along to every no song. No way. <laughs> and that was a moment that I will never forget for the rest of my life. I can't imagine that. Like it's holy shit, man. And the only way that I can prove that this happened is I'm in episode one of the Osbournes, the show. When, so if you <laughs> if you if you look up the Osbournes online, the show, you will see me in the background, standing in the kitchen, doing. I was there, so that's how I can prove it. <laughs> man, this is so crazy! Damn, this, yeah, man, wow, so many things that people would never imagine. Like I'm, I'm asking myself. Actually, there's a question that I have for you. Now we're. I would like to move sure. to personal questions about you and your career and stuff. And to, to ask is like, what is something that people don't know about you that they definitely should. And I feel like in the past half an hour, we said a lot of things like that. But is there something that you feel like the, the people who know you from Metal Gear Rising and Final Fantasy XIV should know about you that they don't? Um, I know you don't like yeah. to like, you know, promote yourself. Right. But now, it's hard. now, it's now hard I'm telling you to do it because you're... Yeah, you're awesome. I know. I know. I mean, I guess I just, I would love for the people that have heard me in these video games to check out some of my other music, mm-hmm. honestly. You know, because I'm always creating, releasing things. I'm actually releasing a single on Friday, Mm -hmm. um, which is a cover of um, Buffalo Springfield's For What It's Worth. And uh, I don't often put out covers myself, but Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I put out covers occasionally, but I I just wanted to continue to put out music during this time because, so this year I was supposed to be on two European tours, Mm -hmm. a US tour. I was booked on a bunch of great festivals Obviously, those are all canceled, but you get over that fairly quickly because, you know, I, I do anyway, because I'm I'm always looking ahead. Right. And mm-hmm. so once I knew that all of those things were canceled, um, of course, I was sad, but um, it's a much bigger picture right now so that we can all take care of each other yeah. and get through together. Yeah. So um, I know that those things will happen next year, hopefully, and that we'll all, um, you know, be able to celebrate and and get through this time man when together. when That's this is happen. over concerts are going to be more amazing than ever because all the I musicians think, in the world are like you know piling up that energy and, and they cannot wait yeah, to release oh, it. i know and also know. the fans are going to be like freaking going crazy one mm-hmm. question i have about you is that your video game music is such a like a, a small layer of your musical persona 
you have a YouTube channel which is full of your other music, like your original music, the covers you made, and some have some incredibly cinematic video. Yeah, you yeah. seem very prolific and creative. To put out that amount of videos and music is like you know it takes like incredible creativity. So I want to know what pushes you to create so much, and what pushes you to, to put yourself out there to that level to that extent. I think you know for for, and I'll I'll direct this question back on you. I mm -hmm. mean, we as creators. Um, we're not doing it to make money, mm -hmm. right? If you are, you're doing it for the wrong reason, then you'll burn out. Yeah. We're doing it because we have a calling to do it. There's something in our DNA that makes us want to create and makes us want to perform. Exactly. And the question is so hard to answer mm. because, um, and I, for me, maybe it goes back to that train ride when I was five years old. Yeah. But, there's something that's always driven me to perform and create and to continue to get better and work on, um, you know, how I can do it better. And so I think that, that that will, that drive will always be in me. Right. I think from what, from what we talked about, I think for you, it's like really bringing joy to the world. Like from what you told me, like you, you're surrounded with amazing people. i I find People who are surrounded with amazing people are just positive, vibrant, nice to have around. They're just this amazing force that, you know, you want to around you. And if the likes of Aussie and stuff let you be in the house and it seems like you're very, like a, a very great person. And from what you told me about the train episode, it seems like it's really bringing joy. Maybe you saw that and that's like... I mean, you know, thank you. And maybe that's it. And I just, you know... uh haven't thought about it that deeply before of just wanting to bring joy, but bring it in my own way that, um, exactly you know, to make fe people feel the main, the main thing about a lot of the music I put out on my own, whether it's with Godhead or on my own is wanting people to not feel alone. Mm -hmm. And even if you sing about subjects where you're feeling alone, um, people will feel like they're not alone if they know that you're feeling the same thing. Yeah, you know? that's cool, man. That's, that's very cool. Um, I was also going to ask you, as a very prolific person, what projects are you working on right now? What I've worked on lately that we should pay attention to? So you mentioned the right. cover that you were releasing on Friday. Is there something else? Right. Um, I can say this. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you what I'm allowed to say. Because I, I, obviously there NBA's. are certain... There's so many NDAs, non-disclosure yeah. agreements. But what I'm allowed to say is I am working uh, with Iridium Games mm. on music for a new game. And this is music that I'm writing and co-writing. And uh, I will be singing on some of it. Others mm -hmm. will be singing on some of it. But this is the largest project this is the largest video game project that i've ever worked on from inception wow. meaning that like i'm writing these i'm writing this music specifically for this specific game and um that's pretty much about all i can say yeah that's cool though man that's that sounds very big but yes it's very very big and um so i'm super excited about that i also right before the pandemic hit and we all quarantined I recorded five new songs for my next album, mm -hmm. which I may release the songs one at a time just to keep things out there. And these are, I recommend these, that. Yeah. It seems like that's the way of the future that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that rather than put out one album a year or one album every year and a half, put out a single like once every month or once every two months or something. Yeah, Or just, make the album, but then release it like in episodes, like one today, one yeah. next yeah. week or whatever. So that's kind of what I'm what I'm uh, contemplating on doing, and then man, I have um, I've got like I was saying before, there, uh, there's so much stuff I want to tell you about. But let me <laughs> tell you, you're going to be really excited on the yeah. voice acting side and also on the music side of what I have coming out the, at the end of this year uh -huh. and also beginning of next year. So there's some really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll, I'll message you right away and be like, hey, and this is the thing I was talking about, you know, so don't <laughs> I worry. I cannot wait, man. I cannot freaking yeah. wait. It sounds like you're always busy with stuff. And it's like, yeah, being an artist, really. Early on, I remember um, when Godhead had some success, 
maybe after like a long album cycle, we sort of relaxed a little bit Mm -hmm. and maybe didn't work on things as much as we should have. And then I realized, oh no, as an artist, as an artist that's making a living in in the entertainment business, and that's your main living, Mm -hmm. we can never really stop. Yeah, that's true. We love this thing so much. I yeah. work on I work on something creative seven days a week, right? But it doesn't feel like work because we're it's it, your passion. We're loving it. It's it's, it's, it's our passion, it's our joy, it's our calling. So it's it's a paradox uh, because it's hard also. Like it's not easy. Like you, there's some things you also have to like renounce to in order to work more on your craft because you can totally give in and just follow formulas and not be not put effort in it. But the problem that happens when you do that is not only that your music doesn't sound as good anymore, but also you don't enjoy it as much anymore. If you don't challenge yourself, I find that you really don't enjoy it anymore. And you're like, ah, whatever. So it's very, right. it's very important to keep on challenging yourself. What's your favorite song you ever made? Oh, man. <laughs> that, Out of the that 500 changes, songs you made, like, what's your favorite? Yeah, that, that changes all the time. That's really hard to say. Yeah. I can't even that because one week it's one song and one week it's another okay for me personally like of the originals that i heard is get the behind me that really stuck that, with me i don't know why like it's uh thanks, man it's you that. know my my idea behind that with the lyrics were, were um you know look i um i as of like now in my life, I sort of follow more of a Buddhist philosophy. Mm-hmm. Like I believe in, a, and then not to get like really religious or anything, I believe in a higher power. I don't know how much they have to do with our everyday yeah. life, you know, but uh, growing up in sort of a Judeo Christian society, yeah. um, every, like I knew a lot of the stories from the Bible, including the story where Jesus was walking in the desert for 40 days mm. and where the devil was trying to tempt him. So I thought I would write a song from the point of view of the devil and oh. how he constantly getting frustrated and more and more frustrated, Man. not being able to tempt Jesus. So that's actually, if you go listen to Get Me Behind Me again, yeah. that's, the song is coming from the point of view of the devil. And I'm, I'm saying not, that. I, it's I, not pro-devil. No, no, it's no. Just, That's the character for that I song. I kind of understand the video also better now. Like that video okay, is so cool, man. Like the everything, like the, the makeup, the costumes, the, the bikes and stuff. Like, love it. Anyway, <laughs> we need to, you need to go soon. So I only have two questions. One is asked by a few fans of mine. It's like, hey, when is the collaboration with Alex Mkala coming? <laughs> but, Dude, whenever you want to yeah. do it, we should definitely collaborate. I'm yeah. totally, obviously right now we can't do it in person, yeah. but uh, we should definitely let's figure out something. It'll be super cool for the future when when there's time or have some time in my hands or whatever. I think people would love that. I wanna grow my channel first because I, if I do this with you, I want to make sure that you're gonna get value from it. Right now, I'm like you know to almost a hundred thousand subscribers, but it's not so big. Once it gets really big, I'm gonna be like, I don't yeah. know, man. A lot of people know who you are, and a lot of people love you. So like, just thank saying. you. But I, I still I still think that I need to push more before I do these things, but. That was a fun question. But the final question for me, like, is uh, where can people follow you and keep on track, like, with your music? Right. First of all, I'd love for people to follow me on Spotify, um, just to to keep the, you know, every, because then every time I put out something new, you're going to hear it. You're going to yeah. get a notification, um, which is just Jason Charles Miller. Yeah. Um, but um, on Instagram and Facebook, I'm Jason Charles Miller. And on Twitter, I'm Jason C. Miller, because my name's too long for Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, Twitter, Twitter. Uh, and then on Twitch, on Twitch, I'm Jason Charles Miller, and I'm on that. I'm on my channel several times a week. I've got my Monday night show, which I'm trying to get you on. Yeah, uh, but I, I don't, man. I'm not as talented as as your guest, so it would be impossible. But I, 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 I appreciate the offer. Sure. Uh, yeah. Any the, the the it's open anytime for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I do a show called Mil- Miller's Music Mondays uh, live on Twitch at um, you know 7 p.m. Pacific. And then uh, the songwriting show that I do on CNE Games, which is at one. The D&D uh, one. The D- yeah, the one for Idol Champions where we write a song about Dungeons and Dragons characters. And then uh, random other other places too. I mean, um, you know, I you'll find me all over YouTube from all of the shows that I used to do for Geek and Sundry to um, various other collaborations and things. So I'm out there, but I would say uh, it'd be great for 
if, if you want to hear my original music and if you like my voice, even in the context of the game that you're playing, if you still like my voice, definitely follow me on Spotify so you can see uh, when my next uh, release comes I, I recommend out. that, man. Your music is amazing. And it's been really an honor to talk to you. I, I, like, I already appreciated and admired you before, but after this conversation, I'm like, wow, not only he's a talented musician, he's also an awesome person, very knowledgeable, Gandalf of music. So I will I will take the I will take up the Gandalf moniker. Um. <laughs> Do it because it belongs to you. Thank you very much, Jason, for your time. This has been very an amazing and enlightening interview, and I hope people are going to enjoy it as much as I did. Thank you for being here on the channel. Thanks so much. I appreciate the um, the time, and uh, I love your channel. And so you Thanks, keep man. doing what you're doing too. Thanks, man. Okay, see you next time. Bye.